Hi, this is Michael Grant from Applied CAX and Sherpa Design. This is a support video I created for a specific NX Cam solution, and we're sharing it now so other people can hopefully make use of our resources. We hope you find it useful too. Hi, Trevor. This is Michael Grant with Applied CAX, and after looking at your drill program and plates, I just wanted to give you some ideas and different ways of doing things kind of show you some tips and tricks with uh, modeling creating sketch sketches and uh, plates holes and such so I'm gonna create an extrude and I'm gonna hit the sketch pick that uh, XY plane and then sketch a rectangle So I'll use a little bit of constraints and dimension formulas, names, whichever you want to call it. Um, right now I auto dimensions because I have that turned on, continuous auto dimensioning. That's a preference you can turn off. So they're just uh, a, you know values that will change. They're driven, not driving, until you actually enter a dimension or, or, do, or add your own defined dimension. So if I want to do a constraint, I don't have to hit constraints. I can just pick a line and pick the sketch origin. Say I want midpoint. Same here. Sorry, I'll hit that again. And do the sketch origin. Ah. Midpoint. And so now it's going to be midpoint there and I could just give this you know I could call this uh, the height and this the uh, width and you know even when you um, do a dimension if I go back here if I don't call those anything they're assigned a value so let's say I want to call this 16. You can see you can see that P7 equals 16. And let's say I want this as 17. P8 equals 17. Well, if I wanted them to be equal, I could do a constraint, or I can just say P7 should be equal to P. And as I start to type, it shows me my values I can enter, and I'll just say P8. So now they're going to be equal. So if I adjust this, it adjusts both. So I'm going to hit finish. And I'll let it extrude an inch. Sure, that's great. And I should probably, now that I did it that way, the sketch is internal to it. I could say make sketch external so that I see it above it in the tree, or I can just edit sketch. I'm going to make these uh, 15 inches. And so now I want to add some holes. I'm going to go to the hole command. And I'm going to hit sketch. I'm just going to do a screw clearance hole to keep this simple. On the face. And I'm going to say my uh, origin, it's putting it here, which I can control. I want it to be the same as the part origin, so centered. And I could just add a point somewhere. So now I have those same, uh, and again, so in this case, maybe I did want the origin to be on the corner there. Um, so I'm going to actually update that. And so when I'm in a, uh, a sketch of this type, the, the, the sketch uh, task, I believe it's called, um, I get this uh, tool here to reattach. Or if you're using direct sketch, which shows up down here, you can add this. A command to your toolbar. So if I go to reattach, I can say that you know I now want this at the corner. And so now when I enter a point, my point, my oh yeah, it's still there. It just moved. I'm gonna actually delete it so I can associate it to the face. So I'll put it there, and let's just say I wanted this to be an inch. And this one, uh, since I'm showing that, I'm gonna say it's equal to that first one so it's an inch by an inch 
And now you can do a pattern of, uh, you know, and since I'll do one more point to show this. Well, if you if you wanted a two patterns and with different distances apart, you could do two points and then do a pattern. But I think you'll get that. I'm just going to do a pattern. I'm going to say a pattern of a curve. I'm going to select the point, and for my first direction, I'm going to pick this box. I could pick the sketch axes and say, you know, I'm going to say 10 at one inch. And then the second direction is going to be my x direction. I'm going to say 10 at 1 inch. And it's going to create pitch expressions. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit Finish. And it comes back here, and I can pick my screw type again. I'm going to accept the quarter inch. I'm not going to have the end chamfer. Um, although I could, I guess we can go ahead and do that and see how that goes. Hit OK, and it's through body. Hit OK. And that sketch is also consumed, so I just see two features and then my holes. And now I'm going to go into manufacturing and because I'm going to use feature based machining I'm going to use cam general and machining knowledge I just switched to manufacturing but I guess in the for the most part you guys are doing the new file new um, but I just wanted to show a quick demonstration so this gives the folder structure for feature based machining and you'll see what I mean but I'm going to go ahead and say that you know my part what my part is and what my blank is I'll just say it's a bounding block hit OK I'm gonna go ahead and save this and now I'm gonna do feature recognition now you could do parametric but since you've modeled this in an X it's you don't have to go through all the picking if you just say feature identification you pick your screw clearance and then um, of course pick workpiece if you've already defined it and then just say identify hit OK and now they're already all selected so I can just say create feature process you know, um, use existing is fine so I'm going to say OK I could have created an MCS for the other side um, we'll see what this does because we do have uh, chamfer features on the other side so it's recognizing the or creating the operations and then it finished so now I have the operations there just for speed, um, no, I think I did do both sides. You could you could have created a I could have created a, yeah I did both sides uh, an MCS to represent the other side, but this will just output the shift um, rotation or whatever. But anyway, there we have um, the operations for our holes generating them and now if I go and look at the program order view what it does with those folders is it, it's going to automatically separate them into different folders and then you could of course put that under your program folder and put it in whatever order you want but what I wanted to show is now I have control by going to expression or control E I can just change my pattern um, let's say I want uh, by one and a half inches
it's going to update. And there's my updated operations. I didn't generate all of them, but and then if I go to this machining feature navigator, I mean, it does show that they've been updated. It still allows you to recreate them, but if I wanted, I could right click this and say, yes, I approve the changes. But I just wanted to show that, um, you know, that easily I can change my pattern and you could get real fancy with that, but I just wanted to show that. And then um, I'll send a separate video for going over your other part, some uh, tips and tricks there. Thanks a lot.